The national conversation about President Obama's stance on same-sex marriage isn't going away. Courage doesn't come without controversy, and this one is no different. But first, further evidence that the American public has, like President Obama, evolved on this issue. A new Gallup poll finds that 51% of the American public approve of President Obama's decision. 45% oppose it. That's in line with other recent polls showing that public opinion has tipped towards favoring marriage equality. But there are voices from the African-American faith community who are upset with the president over this issue. From Pastor Dwight McKissick of Cornerstone Baptist Church in Arlington, quote, President Obama has betrayed the Bible and the black church with his endorsement of same-sex marriage. The Bible is crystal clear on this subject, and the black church strongly opposes same-sex marriage. His endorsement is an inadvertent attack on the Christian faith. Bishop Harry Jackson opposes President Obama's stance on marriage equality, just as he opposed marriage equality in Maryland a few months ago. We need to pray about the Maryland decision about same-sex marriage, that issue. It really is an assault. An enemy wants it to be a legacy or a seed that is planted in this generation that corrupts, perverts, and pollutes decadally generations to come. We need to take a good, hard look at this. First of all, President Obama respects religious traditions and those with different views. I think it's important to recognize that uh, folks who feel very strongly that marriage should be defined narrowly as uh, between a man and a woman. Uh, many of them are not coming at it from a mean-spirited perspective. A bunch of them are friends of mine, uh, you know, pastors and you know, people who uh, I deeply respect. Especially but, in the black community. Absolutely. It is very right. dif a difficult conversation yeah, to absolutely. have. Absolutely. But, uh, but I think it's important for me uh, uh, to say to them that as much as I respect them, as much as I understand where they're coming from, when I meet gay and lesbian couples, for me, I think it, it just has tipped the scales in that direction. President Obama's stance is not a religious one, but he did consider his own faith in his decision. We were both practicing Christians, and obviously this position may be considered to put us at odds with the views of, of, of others. But, you know, when we think about our faith, the thing at, at root that we think about is not only uh, Christ sacrificing himself on our behalf, uh, but it's also the golden rule. Third, black leaders of faith should not make the mistake of using the Bible to suppress the rights of the LGBT community, just as the Bible was used to suppress the rights of African Americans. Throughout our nation's history, again and again, the Bible was cited to justify slavery and discrimination and laws against interracial marriage. There are plenty of examples of this. And do we really want to stand on the side of a racist, bigoted history to substantiate our argument that African-American people should be opposed to gay and lesbian and transgendered and bisexual people? Some African-American people say, well, look, we're mad at the fact that gay and lesbian, transgendered and bisexual people are taking our civil rights movement and using it as a paradigm for their movement. First of all, Martin Luther King Jr. borrowed heavily from Mohandas K. Gandhi. It was already global and international. He borrowed the language, the system and the structure of resistance systematically to oppression from what he called a brown saint in India and applied it to the American scene. Black people do not have a copyright on civil rights insurgents or resistance. Furthermore, we should be proud of the fact that anybody can look at us and derive from our experience an example and a paradigm of their parallel resistance to forms of incivility, to civil rights injustices, and to the outright, the outright degradation of their personalities. This is a fight about what we think is right and wrong, to be sure, but we must not use the Bible to create more enemies of the faith, but to use our faith as a basis to identify with those who are the least lost and the lonely. My Bible tells me, Jesus said, you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. There are no asterisks on what Jesus said, except gay people, except lesbian people, except transgender or bisexual people. Do we want to really use the Bible the same way it was used against us? Many white Christians believing that they were under the spirit of God and the anointment of their faith, 
believe that black people should be marginalized, second-class citizens, put out of the church, refused entree, not given communion because they were not human, they were not Christian, and therefore they were not their brothers and sisters. They cited biblical texts to justify their bigotry. The great preacher and mystic Howard Thurman says a bigot is a person who makes an idol of his or her commitments. Black Christians must be deeply rooted in their faith, but not deeply entrenched in bigotry. And furthermore, do we want to become sexual rednecks? Do we actually want to extend the same trajectory of transgression and tragic suppression of the belief and faith of gay and lesbian and transgendered and bisexual people? Do we want to stand on the wrong side of history because we have a narrow, parochial, provincial conception of faith? So I call upon all of my clergymen and clergywomen, friends of the faith and thinkers and all prominent African-American people to stand against this bigotry. Come on, Sophia and Roland and Jamal, put down your covering and sanctification of bigotry in the name of faith when all you're doing is getting God to cosign your bigotry. Let's be bigger than the bigotry. Let's stand above the provincial and the narrow, and let's call upon the faith of our fathers and mothers to release and to free those who are oppressed and not to reinforce their vicious oppression. Isn't it ironic that the architect of Martin Luther King Jr.'s March on Washington was a gay African-American man? It is notable that President Obama's stance on gay marriage won't change public policy a great deal. President Obama was already strongly in favor of legal protections for LGBT communities, and he is clearly aware that most states in the country have laws on the books against gay marriage. But he is willing to cast his voice on the side of equality. I would also point to Pastor Jamal Harrison Bryant, who came to this conclusion. While I am uncomfortable with the president on this position, I am more uncomfortable with the alternative, an agenda that does not include the poor and platform, that does not engage minorities or the black church. But be braver than that, Jamal. Speak out in your pulpit against the vicious criminal insistence that everybody be a narrow version of heterosexual and open the doors of the church for all of those people in your pu in your pews who are crying for acceptance black gay lesbian and other people who are other sexed who are crying out for the acceptance of their god i ain't never been to a black church that turns down black tithes who are from gay people i've never been to a black church that refuses to take the money of those who are lesbian, gay, transgendered, or bisexual. And we know many of the ushers, the choir directors, and God knows the ministers in churches preaching against homosexuality are secretly closeted themselves and engaging in internal, psychic, social, and spiritual warfare. Free them. This is what the gospel is all about. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's questions. Whose policies are more in line with Christian teachings? Text A for President Obama, text B for Mitt Romney to 622-639. Or go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com. I'll bring you the results later in the show. I'm joined by Bishop Harry Jackson, a senior pastor at Hope Christian Church, and Aubrey Hendricks, professor of biblical interpretation at the New York Theological Seminary, a visiting scholar in religion and African-American studies at Columbia University, and author of The Universe Bends Towards Justice. Bishop Jackson, we showed a bit of your sermon there, so I'll let you go first. What's your position on what President Obama did this week? Well, as we and I talked earlier on a radio show, I want to know what he's going to do next. He didn't just say what he said because he wanted to inform people in any moment of clarity. I believe for 20 years he's known that he has been for same-sex marriage, but he didn't know whether he wanted to inject that issue into the political arena. So it's happened. I want to know what will it mean, how will it change things. And so in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be asking for 100 strong black men and women to come to Washington, D.C., and prayerfully meet with the president and or his surrogates. And we want to hear from them clearly from his words 
what he's going to do. Are we going to have more uh, intrusions into the culture? The lack of uh, actually uh, following through with DOMA, things of that nature. What okay. is the president going to do? All right, Professor Hendricks, before we get to your area of expertise, biblical interpretation, so you can put this stuff in context, is this more an issue of justice than it is about religion? Your latest book is The Universe Bends Toward Justice, quoting Martin Luther King Jr., quoting a famous saying. Give us a sense of your understanding of the issue. Well, I, I think it is uh, a, a really about justice. It's a question of human personality. And uh, I, I must say that I don't think that um, all the, the churches that reject uh, marriage equality are, are doing it vicious, viciously. You know, many of them deeply believe it. But um, what they overlook is that, uh, that all people are equal under the law. So um, constitutionally, everyone should have the right uh, to sacralize, to marry, to have all the rights of uh, the one they love, whether it's in the same sex or, or not. Um, so it's, and, and it's about justice also because Jesus gave us one major way to judge one another. That's the end of Matthew 25. He said uh, th that uh, if you have, as you have not done it to the least of these, you have mm -hmm. not done it to me. As you have not um, fed the, the hungry and, and, and clothed the naked and uh, sheltered the homeless, you have not done it to me. He said, and those who don't look out for one another, he said that they, they are the ones who are going to go to hell. So in other words, he said the way that we should judge one another is how we treat one another, whether somebody is, is, uh, is trying to help somebody, whether somebody is trying to love their neighbor as their self. And if they're not doing that, it doesn't matter what their, their sexual orientation is, okay. uh, they're on the wrong side. Right. Bishop Jackson, uh, sure. given what uh, Dr. Hendricks has just said, the Bible was often used as a bludgeon against African-American people. Shouldn't yeah. we be mindful of not using it in a parallel way against gay men and, and lesbian women? I, I do believe we're not supposed to hurt people, but let me say this about justice. Um, if you really want justice, why not make room for the Muslims? Why not go all the way and ask for polygamy? Why not broaden this discussion so it looks like a minority is getting its way, maybe at the expense of other people getting their way? I won't, don't want to change marriage at all. But if you're really arguing for justice, why not have uh, bigamy and other things, polygamy, be a part of this equation? What, 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 Professor Hendricks, you know, that's an outright, obviously, misapplication of the analogy here. Uh, the the no. fact that we're talking about bigamy on the one hand and gay and lesbian people is to predetermine that this somehow is pathological and it's outside of the scope of no. normal morality. So I'm, let, me, let me let Professor Hendricks respond. So okay, the point is to, make, to draw the analogy itself is to already participate in the prejudice. How do we get free of this saying, oh, well, if we can deal with being gay, let's talk about predatory behavior of those who rape. Oh, I didn't say to give us the, the falseness of that analogy. Let me let Professor Hendricks respond. Okay. Well, yes, sir. Well, well you know, we, if you're going to talk biblically, I think the bishop is speaking biblically. If you're going to speak biblically, um, you know, it does say in, 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 uh, in Leviticus that if a man lie with a man, he should be killed. It also says that if a child is disobedient to a parent, he should be killed. It also says someone who spills their seed on the, on the ground uh, or masturbates should, should be killed. So, you know, if, if, if we're going to talk about a biblical basis here and a justice basis, let's get it right. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is there is not really a strong biblical basis for saying that, that people who love one another and who want to sacralize their relationship in the eyesight of God, there's no biblical basis for keeping them apart. And if the bishop wants to talk about specifics, we can do that. But I, but yeah. well, we're going to have to, we're gonna have to shell that conversation because we had to go right now, hard handed as it is. Thank you, Bishop Harry Jackson and Thank Dr. You, Aubrey Hendricks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Remember to answer tonight's question there at the bottom of the screen and share your thoughts on Twitter at Ed Show. I want to know what you think. Next, Mitt Romney calls his high school bullying a prank, but one woman is calling it an act of torment. Her name, Judy Shepard, the mother of Matthew Shepard. She'll join us next. And new evidence of Governor Scott Walker's determination to destroy unions in the state of Wisconsin. We'll play the blockbuster video, and John Nichols tells us what it means for the recall. Stay with us. <laughs>